Proud to serve Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. This is WNEP 16, the news station. Now, from the area's largest television news organization. This is Newswatch 16 Weekend. Last night on Newswatch 16 Update, we told you about a proposed curb extension project at the intersection of Blackman Street and Route 309 in Wilkesbury Township. PennDOT wants to put in new curbing to cut down on accidents there, but as Newswatch 16's Valerie Devine found out, some people aren't very happy about the idea. You're looking at three businesses that have been here on the corner of Blackman Street and Route 309 for 36 years, and the owners aren't happy with what PennDOT has in mind. We could be out of business. That's what it means, completely out of business. Thomas Livitz is part owner of three businesses here, an auto parts store, a gas station, and a cafe. He says as long as he can remember, his customers have always been able to pull into his businesses here without any problem. But now he's not so sure. That's because Pendant wants to put curbing in most of the way around him. Miss Livitz says the curbing will make it more difficult for customers to get into his businesses, especially his gas station. Just across the street at Germano Glass and Plastics, the concerns are much the same. PennDOT wants to put new curbing here, too. Owner Robert Germano wanted to expand his business. Now he's afraid he could lose it. We wouldn't need as many men as we have right now. A few men would indeed lose their jobs. We would have to relocate, find a suitable place for our business. PennDOT says it's willing to work with the businesses and will take another look at the situation before a final decision is made. Valerie Devine, Newswatch 16, Wilkes-Barre Township. You've heard a lot lately about Michael Drummond. First, he received an artificial heart to keep him alive until a suitable donor of a real heart could be found. Now Drummond has his new heart and from his hospital bed told a reporter that he's feeling pretty well. He also talked for a bit about his feelings concerning the man who had to die to give him life. You know, wonderful that they did, you know, that they gave my, me a second chance to live. William Schrader is apparently doing pretty well, well enough to take part in a cardiac walk in Louisville, Kentucky today. Schrader did not actually walk, of course. He rode in a carriage along with the wives and widows of other, other artificial heart patients. The cardiac walk was held to kick off a local fundraising campaign. Researchers say they are working on a solution to the problems of strokes suffered by people who get the Jarvik 7 artificial heart one researcher says a uh, design problem may be causing those strokes. The man who was chief of staff in the Carter administration is suffering from lymphoma, cancer of the lymph gland. A hospital spokesman says Hamilton Jordan's prognosis is good, though. Jordan, sometimes a controversial figure while Carter was in office, has maintained a relatively low profile since returning to Georgia. Lately, he's been doing some teaching and writing as a, and working rather as a political and business consultant. There are some surveys out tonight that make a rather interesting reading. One of them says that drug use among high school students is still a problem, but it hasn't worsened since last year. Also, another survey says a number of students uh, who abuse alcohol at Penn State has gone up. But the survey says that goes along with a national trend. The man who did some of that survey work says he's not sure why that has happened, but he says it may be that students think they are now under more stress. Well, in a little while, we ought to have a new Miss America. Whoever that woman is, she stands to make a good bit of money during her year in the title. A new Miss America will get a $30,000 scholarship, plus about $100,000 in personal appearance fees. She also will have the chance to go into an entirely new field because of her exposure as Miss America. The homeless shelter in Wilkesbury will close this weekend until November. The shelter has been helping to take care of those who don't have a home, uh, but the people who run it tell us they will be worried now about those people and where those folks will be sleeping now that the cold weather has begun to move in. Well, we have been enjoying some fine fall weather these past few days, not to very cool, However, I suppose the big question is whether it'll continue or are we going to be looking at something pretty bad over the next horizon? For that, we'll have to turn to meteorologist Paul Hepner. Oh, Mike, let me ask you a question. On a scale of 1 to 10, what would you give today? 
I'd give it about a 10. I about think. a 10. Yeah. Okay, I think I agree. I think most folks would agree. The question is, what will tomorrow rank on the scale? The details coming up in just one moment. When the Simpsons came back from vacation, Mrs. Simpson discovered... He didn't run the dishwasher. I thought you were going to run it. These have been sitting around for a week. Nothing's going to make them look good. Try Cascade. Cascade cuts right through dried on food and gets rid of drops that leave spots. Cascade sheeting action leaves glasses virtually spotless. They're not going to look good. They look good. They look great. Try Cascade. It doesn't just clean. It goes all the way to clear. Kleenex off teak presents really? Nose Runs Wild. <laughs> it's that time of year when allergies <laughs> run noses <laughs> ragged. <laughs> and ordinary uh, tissues uh, can uh, rub them raw. <laughs> so run to the comfort of Kleenex off teak tissues. Because soft teak has special softness fibers fluffed up for the softest touch ever from a Kleenex tissue. Soft teak for softness that's right on the nose. <laughs> It's a warehouse clearance sale now going on for one week only at Cato TV and Appliance Stores in Wilkes-Barre and Shavertown. Special prices on RCA color TV sets and video cassette recorders. See the new RCA Stereo Ready 26-inch dark tube consoles. Remember, all TV sets sold by Cato's are covered by a two-year warranty on all parts and labor. Hurry, this sale is for one week only. We're open every night till 8 o'clock. Cato TV, where the service people know the answers. Well, if you're waiting to tour that old mine at McDade Park in Lackawanna County, you're going to have to wait a bit longer. The tours were supposed to start this weekend, but uh, they have been delayed until perhaps the end of the month. The people inspecting the mine say it's up to standard for a working mine, but not to the standards for a tour mine. Because the opening is delayed, the closing will be two, and the McDade Park mine will probably be open for about two months this fall. Well, speaking of fall, we have had the pleasure of a few good days now. And it is time to wonder about the next few days. Meteorologist Paul Hepner may have the answer to our questions. Paul? Well, Mike, the big high pressure system that has influenced our weather during the past several days is a massive one. It spreads from the east coast all the way back out to the Great Plains states, and it's moving very, very slowly. So that means that the kind of weather that we're enjoying right now will persist not only through tomorrow, but through Monday, Tuesday, and into Wednesday. As I see it now, it's slowly moderating temperatures. Temperatures are falling off in the backyard, though, with clear skies. It's nighttime. You expect the temperature to drop. And here's what the current readings look like. We find that readings are dropping back into the 50s. At this present hour, we have 54 degrees. Relative humidity, very, very nice, 52%. The wind direction still from the cool northeast at 5 miles per hour. And the barometer is rising at 30.46 inches. Today's high temperature, a delightful 66. Low temperature last night was 39. You can see that that was only five degrees warmer than the record low, which was 34 degrees, set back in 1911. The record high temperature, by the way, is 92. And we won't have to worry about any record highs for quite a while to come. A look at the jet stream this evening shows what we call a large amplitude or a high amplitude flow. That's when you have big rises and dips in the jet stream. And when you have the flow coming up from the southwest, you have warm weather. That's a way it is in the Rockies this evening. They have some very hot temperatures out that way. And when the flow takes a big dip from Canada and comes down to the southeast, you get very cool temperatures. And of course, anyone who's been outside during the morning, the last couple of mornings, can attest to that very chilly air. Well, the jet stream is expected to flatten out a little bit during the next couple of days. So by Tuesday, expect to see some cool and damp weather across the Pacific Northwest and some of that warmer weather beginning to work its way into Pennsylvania. So no temperature extremes. When you have this kind of pattern, temperatures are very seasonable. That means 70s here. A look at the satellite picture for the daytime hours today shows lots of sunshine, not only in Pennsylvania, but up to our northeast through New England. They had some very cool temperatures up there once again this morning. Concord, New Hampshire was 31 degrees and some record lows across the Carolinas with Greensboro, North Carolina coming in at 39. Now you do see some clouds out to our west. No big deal. These are high clouds, not producing any rain. There are some rain showers down across Florida with this cold front. Temperatures are pretty seasonable down to the south and southwest, but kind of cool still up in New England at 61 degrees. Temperatures were cool for this time of year down through South Carolina, only 73. And then they warm up into the 70s out across the Plain States. As this high pressure system moves across, 
we will see some gradually warmer temperatures working their way in here. Some rain down in Texas, dumping more than an inch and a half on Austin, Texas, and a weak low pressure system causing some rain up across the Pacific Northwest. We'll have some cooler temperatures up there tomorrow with that low pressure system, but for us, the big high drifting right over Pennsylvania. That means lots of sunshine, temperatures getting well up into the 60s to near 70, and as this high pressure system gradually drifts off to the east-southeast, I think we'll start to see some of the 75 degree air working its way in for Tuesday and into Wednesday. The rain that's out to our southwest over Oklahoma and Texas will kind of fizzle, stay put for the next couple of days. So no threat of rain for several days to come. My forecast for us for tomorrow calls for a 10 on the scale of 1 to 10. Another beautiful day, lots of sunshine. Temperatures here in the metro area around 70, but a little bit cooler up by Lake Ariel, 68 degrees. Red Rock right around 66 for high tomorrow because they are a little bit higher up in elevation. Perryville coming in 70 degrees. That's over in Carbon County. Temperatures out to our west and across the central counties tomorrow in the upper 60s near 71 at Millview. And the wind will be light and variable with that high pressure system drifting right across. Here's a look at sunrise and sunset for tomorrow. And as you realize, the days are getting a little bit shorter now. Sunrise at 644 in the morning. Sunset tomorrow night, just 12 minutes past 7 o'clock. Winter's not too far away. In fact, you may think it's winter tomorrow morning when you get up. Low temperature, 43 degrees. Now, temperatures will be dropping into the mid to upper 30s across some of the northern counties tonight, up by Bradford, Susquehanna County, for instance. So there could be a couple of areas that still have a little light touch of frost tomorrow morning. Most of us won't see any frost, though. That's good news. Pleasant temperatures tomorrow. High temperature, 70 degrees. Lots of sunshine. The delightful weather will continue right into Monday. Partly cloudy skies, 73 degrees. The warming trend, Tuesday and Wednesday. Readings getting up actually a little bit above normal by Wednesday. I expect to see a high of 77. So, Mike, the beat goes on. Yeah, I guess I'm going to have to go out and finish cutting the lawn tomorrow after all, huh? Why not? Good day for it. Okay. Thanks, Paul. We'll see you later. Well, coming up, Kim Carlson with the story on the two New York baseball teams running for the pennant. Plus, Penn State winning another one the hard way. The Sports Watch is next. At Celebrity Coach, it's our second annual clearance sale, only with a new twist. This year, we're overstocked. That's right, overstocked. Most of these units were produced for dealers, but they're waiting for 86s, so we're stuck with them, but not for long. We guarantee you'll never see prices like these again, because they've got to go. We need to raise cash to pay for the chassis. We're going to be liquidating all our vans for less. Make us an offer. Maybe we'll surprise you. Nobody can sell for less during our overstock clearance sale going on now at Celebrity Coach. How would you like a better chicken nugget where the meat's all white with every single bite? Sounds good to me. Leave it to Long John Silver's to bring you 100% white meat chicken nuggets. Sounds like a taste in a place I want to be. Sounds good. You're going to say, I never knew nuggets could taste this way. Long John Silver. All white meat nuggets. Sounds good to me. Well, the balls have been pitched, the football is thrown, and we're all sitting around here waiting to see where they've landed. Tim Carlson, can you tell us about that? Well, for some people, they landed in the right places, and for other people, they landed in the wrong places. But Penn State is now 2-0 on the season. But both wins have been anything but easy or pretty. Today, the home opener at Beaver Stadium and Joe Zone was there as the Lions beat Temple by two points. A lot like the opener a week ago. A big Penn State first half, a letdown in the second half. Fullback, Tim Manoa here. First quarter action, catching a John Schaefer pass. The drive ends with Manoa from the two. Penn State, five minutes left in the first quarter. They lead 7-3. But wait, this is as pretty as it gets. Temple's Lee Saltz to Willie Marshall. 50 yards, touchdown, and it's 10-7 Temple. D.J. Dozier left early again today with a hamstring pull, but not before going 80 yards all told. Four here on the go-ahead touchdown. 14-10 Penn State to end the first quarter. Another Penn State drive rudely terminated by this interception in the end zone. 
Then after a Massimino Manca field goal, 10 seconds left in the half, Schaefer to Giles, 11 yards, and Penn State led 24-10 at halftime. The Nittany Lions go to sleep in the second half. Temple tailback Paul Palmer has the fourth best rushing day ever against the Penn State team. His touchdown here makes it 24-17. Temple has a chance to win late in the game, but fumbles two punt returns. One leads to another Manka field goal. 27-17, six minutes left. Hey, the Owls don't give a hoop. They're coming back. Palmer again. 10-yard touchdown, 210 yards rushing on 30 carries. It's 27-23. Here's the two-point conversion, and it's good. 27, 25, four minutes left. Penn State fighting to hold on now. Needs a big play and gets it. Blair Thomas returns the kickoff 60 yards. Penn State runs out the clock and wins 27, 25. In the first half especially, it seemed like there was an opportunity to put the other team away. You kept going, you kept getting yardage, but you never quite put the finishing touches on them. That's why I can't say we're a really good football team yet, Joe. I think that's exactly right. I think that when you give up as many scoring opportunities as we did the first half, uh, you usually get licked. Do you want? You usually get licked. I don't care what. I don't care if you come away with 10 points. But when you have a chance to score as many points as we did the first half and only get what we got out of it, ordinarily you're going to get licked if you're playing anybody decent. And uh, I think maybe that made me a little nervous at halftime, too. A two-point win for Penn State. They're 2-0, and and next week, the third game of the season, right here at Penn State against East Carolina. This is Joe Zone, Sports Watch 16 at Beaver Stadium. All right, next week, Penn State at home with East Carolina. We go to the college top 20 scoreboard. There you see number one Auburn over Southern Miss, 29-18. Bo Jackson, 205 yards, 500 yards in two games now. Number two, Oklahoma Idol. Rutgers in Florida, how about that? A 28 tie. USC was idle. Number five, Iowa rolls over Drake. Number six and number seven are idle. 10-9, Oklahoma State beat North Texas State. Ohio State beat Pitt tonight, 10 to seven. That's a final now. Number 10, UCLA and Tennessee tied. Penn State over Temple, there you see it. LSU beat North Carolina. Michigan over Notre Dame, 20 to 12. Arkansas trailing Mississippi, 14-11 in the fourth. South Carolina was idle. BYU beat Washington. It was Maryland over Boston College. Nebraska was idle. Illinois over Southern Illinois by three. And number 20, Alabama leads Texas A&M, 23-10 in the fourth. Pennsylvania colleges this afternoon. Carnegie Mellon over Bucknell. Southern Connecticut beat East Stroudsburg. Lehigh rolled over Indiana. Wilkes over Lebanon Valley big. Lycoming beat Lock Haven. It was Bloomsburg over Shippensburg. Salem, West Virginia over Kutztown. Mansfield beat Brockport, New York, and Muhlenberg over Susquehanna. Make sure you're watching Joe's Own Sports Monday at 6 when he has the new Super 16 high school football rankings because there's going to be a major reshuffling. Quite a few teams in the rankings knocked off this weekend, including number one Valley View in a hard-fought game with Riverside this afternoon. A big victory for the Vikings. Here's a look at it. Third quarter action now. Riverside will strike first. It's no score here. Quarterback Tim Hahn with a slant pattern of Walt Denninger. Watch him go 53 yards for the touchdown with the extra point. 7-0. Vikings in the fourth quarter. Valley View scores. Jim McCormick with the nine-yard run. Nice blocking here for the touchdown. 7-6 Riverside. Coach Frank Pizzaglia goes for the win with a two-point conversion. But Riverside's Dave Frabel takes care of that. Riverside kept the ball the rest of the way. They go on to beat Valley View. 7-6, to six, the scoreboard now. Wyoming Valley Conference, Division Two. Myers over Nanticoke, 14-6 in Division Three. Northwest beat Westside Tech, 7-0. In the Big 11, Riverside over Valley View, there you see it, 7-6. to six. It was uh, Dunmore over Lakeland, 21-18. North Pocono beat Scranton Tech and Abington Heights over Mid-Valley. Suburban Conference, Susquehanna over Wallen Paul, packed by 20. Carbondale beat Western Wayne. Bishop O'Hara over Montrose. Eastern Conference now, Wyoming area, big over Hanover. 37 nothing number six blue Mount 16 blue mountain over st Clair. crestwood squeaked out one over dallas tunkanic over lake lehman tri valley over jim thorpe more scores mahanoi area over pine grove lord's regional over panther valley cardinal brennan nativity a 10 10 tie in the anthracite league north Schuylkill over west hazelton mid penn conference the east freeland over columbia montour botech in the East Penn Conference, Bethlehem Catholic upsets number 13, Whitehall. Easton over Allentown Central Catholic. In the Centennial, Stroudsburg beat Notre Dame. East Stroudsburg over Pleasant Valley. In the Colonial, 
Southern Lehigh over Conestoqua, Penn Argyle over Calisades. In the northern tier, it was Athens over Waverly. The rest of the high school scores now. Williamsport beats a great Gonzaga prep out of Washington, D.C., 28-7. Lackawanna trail over Wyalusing. North Lebanon beat Wilson by three. Canton over North Penn big. Tawanda over Southside. Newport beat Upper Dauphin and Penn Valley in ball legal Nittany at 20. 20 time. Let's talk baseball in game three of the series between the Yanks and the Blue Jays in New York tonight. Toronto leading by two and a half going in, and we see it in today's plays. Yanks make that the Yanks up one nothing in the Jays second, and that's Garth Orge with a double down the line. Jesse Barfield will come up the score, and that'll tie it at 1-1 as Orge gets the double, but the Yanks grab the lead back later. Rex Hudler with the infield hit. Billy Sample comes in to score. 2-1 Yanks, but the Jays come back to win it. 7-4 as we check the scoreboard. There you see it. Toronto over the Yanks, 7-4. The Yanks, 4.5 back now. Detroit over Baltimore, 10-3. Uh, in the first game, the Orioles come back in the second game. Kansas City now 2.5 up over California as they beat Oakland this afternoon. California leads in their game over Texas in the third. Milwaukee, 2-2 with Boston in the seventh. Cleveland, 11-9 over Minnesota in the first game. Minnesota comes back in the second. Seattle leads Chicago 2-1 in the second. The Mets stay in first place. Was a short one. They dropped a half game behind the Cards again today. They lost to the Expos. The Cards beat the Cubs. Today's plays has the story. Mets third inning. one nothing Expos. That's Keith Hernandez, the RBI guy with a base hit to center. Mookie Wilson comes around to score, makes it 1-1. But Montreal went back up in the bottom of the inning. Vance Law with a sack fly scores Reigns. 2-1 Spos. The final Two, uh, the final was 5-1 Expos. Let's go to the scoreboard now in the National League. Montreal over the Mets, 5-1. St. Louis beat the Cubs, 5-4. Phils over, uh, make that Pittsburgh over the Phils, 6-3. L.A. beat Cincinnati, 7-0. Frisco over Atlanta, 3-1. And Houston beat San Diego, 4-3. Wanted to mention very quickly, University of Scranton tied in their soccer game this afternoon with Keene, 2-2. And the Scranton Eagles won big tonight at Syracuse. We'll make that Albany. 69 nothing, Mike. Well, there you go. Lots of news tonight in You're sports. You're not kidding. You're almost out of breath there. I for am. A while, I'm going to take a rest. All right. See we'll later. all take a rest. Uh, time enough for uh, one more story or so. When we come back, News Watch 16 weekend update continues. Don't fall to uh, not GM, no way. But only at the new Decatur's Landmark on JMC Renault, a choice 7.5 APR finance and plus a landmark consumer incentive. I said 7.5 APR finance and plus a landmark consumer incentive. If you select Chrysler's 7.5 APR incentive, Landmark will match that with an official landmark consumer incentive. You can't beat it. See any sales and for details of the new Decatur's Landmark on JMC Renault. State College. Hey, Wally Pfeiffer, Ponderosa's got the hots for you. For him? For everybody. <laughs> Introducing Ponderosa's new hot spot. Hot macaroni and cheese. Hot veggies. Two hot juice. Nice warm rolls. <laughs> All part of the world's biggest, best salad buffet. Ponderosa's hot spot. Cause you're the boss at Ponderosa. Now Hotspot plus world's biggest best salad buffet plus ribeye steak just $3.29. The beat of a generation pounding. Got to get down before the magic gets away. Oh, helps it feel so right. Dance until the sun shines. Finally tonight, a little bit of music in the streets in Scranton. The Lackawanna Arts Council brought the 64-piece uh, U.S. Forces Command Band in to play on Wyoming Avenue this evening. Some music for a nice autumn evening. We'll leave you there and ask you to join us again tomorrow night for Newswatch 16 Weekend. Good night. <laughs>